Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about Rusty Brown, the new book by the great cartoonist Chris Ware. It's one of my all-time favorites. I've been looking forward to this one for years. I know it's not Batman or X-Men, but hey, open your mind, stick around for a little while, and see what else comics can do for you. Check it out today on Comic Book News. Okay, if it's not Batman, then why are we in the Batcave, right? Well, Rusty Brown, uh, the character, is at the center of this book. And, and at its heart, he is a collector. He's a collector uh, of, of action figures, and particularly of Supergirl action figures. Now, uh, this may ring true to some of you out there, or it may not. You may think that uh, the author is just making fun of people who collect stuff or this type of, of, of person, and that's certainly true. But what's also true is if you know Chris Brown, uh, Chris Ware, rather, he's a uh, an obsessive collector himself, collects all kinds of things, uh, and he's a a character in this book and a subject of uh, ridicule as well himself. He's not afraid to poke fun at himself, even for like being kind of a pretentious kind of art music snobby kind of a guy. Um, so. I first got introduced to the works of Chris Ware uh, when I was in high school. I saw something in Diamond Previews, something called Acme Novelty Library. Um, I think it was probably being published by Fantagraphics at that time. And it and it showed a little cool little picture. It had some retro art of a kid with a big head, kind of Charlie Brownish looking. And it said, Jimmy Corrigan, the world's smartest kid. And it looked like maybe he was sort of like a retro style inventor and it looked like just tons of fun and right up little Danny's alley, little high school Danny's alley, you know, like tinkering with stuff, but like fun comics, but that were really well drawn, but maybe not totally mainstream. I, I was into fanographics from reading hate over the years and eight ball and stuff like that. So, um, I ordered it and man, I, it, it was not what I was expecting in any way, but in the greatest way possible, right? Jimmy Corrigan um, is is a story that's 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 deep, and it's dark, and it's sad, but it's also funny, right? It's got its moments of uh, of extreme, like like overwhelming sadness throughout the book, but then these moments, little moments of hope and sunshine. That, that come through all of them more clearly because of the kind of gloomy tone of the rest of the book. But there's also all kinds of little gems buried, little text bits. Like reading the indicia on these books, there's little jokes thrown in by the author. Stuff that is just satirical, bitingly funny. A, a my first exposure to the character of Rusty Brown was... Uh, in some of the older comics, and this is where, where some of the later years in Rusty Brown's life um, that are actually not in this comic, because believe it or not, this is a huge book, but this is only volume one of two. This has been 16 years in the making to bring us this volume. I'm hoping volume two is going to be along a lot sooner than that. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do we got a million dollar comics cam if we're not looking at Rusty Brown? So let's dive straight in right now. <laughs> Yeah, out of the Million Dollar Comics Cam. And man, this thing uh, will look pretty good, I think, on the Comics Cam, because, especially because of the type of coloring uh, and the type of artwork. So, so let's see. First of all, the dust jacket. I hate dust jackets. They stink. They get damaged. They're, they're usually ugly, but they're easily damaged. And I would rather have like a hardcover, sort of like permanent, so I don't have to worry about getting it damaged. But man, this thing is something special. Uh, if we, I'm gonna slide it out for the purposes of this review, but we'll see that it folds open into this giant double-sided poster thingamajig. Uh, we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later maybe. Um, but instead, let's look, let's notice that when we take it off, it's not just some cloth binding, right? It's a highly designed thing. That's what Chris Ware does. He designs stuff, right? He builds models and 
cardboard cutouts and 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 especially books and comics. So uh, we're gonna flip open the million dollar comics cam and you'll see all kinds of little um, cool things. Like this is all Rusty Brown's s school book, right? Very very cool, full of little funny jokes. If we go in, everything is full of jokes. Um, but if we take a look at you know Rusty Brown's Metropolis, right? Oh, we're coming in. Oh, here's Rusty Brown's headquarters, and here's the Rusty Brown Command Center, little Rusty's room, right? And we get to see oh Rusty Brown mise en scene. This is the school that um, most of the action is going to take place at. Here we see the snowflakes, and uh, snowflake is sort of a, a a visual narrative theme throughout this book uh, that we may or may not talk about. Um, and we start to see what we're getting into here as far as the color. This is some beautiful stuff. And here we are introduced to our main characters, uh, Rusty Brown, of course. We've got uh, his dad, W.K. Woody Brown. We've got uh, his pal, Chalky White, Calcium Chalky White, uh, who's, who's Rusty's other sort of introverted, even nerdier friend uh, that collects action figures and grows up to be like friend slash rival to young Rusty, who's really grows up into a pretty warped kid um, or a warped adult rather. Jason Lint, uh, sort of a, a, a bully character at the high school and uh, Allison White, who's Chalky's uh, sister. And then finally, Joanna Cole, who's a teacher at the school. She plays banjo. Oh, and then, then let's not forget Franklin Christensen Ware. I mean, not even a disguise. This is Chris Ware. That's his real name, F.C. Ware. This is what he looks like. And uh, and he's an art teacher who also uh, loves music. Chris Ware is like a ragtime piano player. Loves all things old-timey and hand-done and, uh, you know, and... and and comments on that in this book. He's very like self-deprecating in that way. This book is very seems very pretentious to some, going for themes and and ideas that are not normally explored in comics and a structure that is really um, experimental and explorational. In fact, Chris Ware's what I, I I think the right term to call him would be like a formalist because he really loves experimenting with different formats and sizes and shapes from tiny mini comics to like wall sized, literally like gallery hanging um, comics as well. Million Dollar Comics Cam might need a little expansion. We can't quite see both pages, so we're gonna kinda concentrate on one page at a time. I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not gonna go through every page of this book, but I just wanna give you a, a glimpse of what you're in for here. The artwork, first of all, let's start. You know, it is as it is super simple, right? It's ultra simplified. It's sim it's not just simplistic, it's not. It's actually quite advanced in its composition and its design. Uh, the color work and everything else takes a lot of skill to pull this stuff off using just the bare minimum of lines to communicate things. And we get to we get to meet Poor young Rusty Brown in school. He's bullied. He loves action figures. He's got kind of a sad home life. We don't even find out till too much later that you know his dad is a teacher at the school who barely communicates with him. Um, but we're gonna get a glimpse into his life. But also, in more in this book, we get a glimpse into his father's life. We actually there's not very much Rusty Brown in this book, and. A big reason for that is this is, like I said, volume one. So many of the things that I was thinking I was going to see in this book, I, I got to the end of this book and I was like, where's all the Rusty Brown stuff? Because all the stuff that I first saw that I really loved that was super funny, um, I think is coming in book two because most of that stuff is not in here. There is some funny stuff, especially like interactions of, of the art teacher slash artist Chris Ware and uh, Jordan Lint. And his his buddy, the two sort of like high school stoner bully dudes who smoke pot with the art teacher, and uh, some of that stuff's pretty funny. The art teacher himself is like super pretentious about literature as well as art and everything else, and and is obviously where poking fun at himself. 
Um, so Rusty's big deal is his his big dilemma in this book is he accidentally brought his Supergirl action figure to school with him. He forgot it was in his pocket. He was playing with it. He loves it so much. So he puts it in his desk. All the kids are playing outside while he's inside drawing comics. Does this sound familiar to any of you out there? Uh, you know, his, his whole thing is he feels like he has super hearing powers and, and, is, def- and is turning into ear man. Uh, you know, like any kid, he's got his own little superhero comics. He loves drawing. He's sucked into a world of his own. He's super bullied. He is the dorkiest kid in class. Um, but as we'll see, he's about to meet Chalky White, who, who, who will prove to be maybe even dorkier. What's really cool here is we've got one comic going on on the top with a separate strip going on on the bottom. They're taking place simultaneously in time, and at some points they overlap into each other, like something that's happening here happens here at the same time as the characters overlap. I love that kind of stuff, the formalism. I, I recognize this kind of artwork and this stuff, and, and even this style of reading comics is challenging to read. It's a little different, you know, if you're used to straight ahead action comics. Um, this is not that. This is something else. But you have to pay very close attention, and it, and it bears fruit to pay attention because this subtle little gags and moments that happen that really like um, bring home the story. And we get to see our main character sort of introduced. And the here in the teacher's lounge, three of our characters are teachers. There's, you know, Rusty's dad, Woody, and Mr. Ware, and, and, and Miss Cole. And Miss Cole plays the banjo and is inviting, you know, the other teachers there. She's a really kind of introverted lady herself, third grade teacher. And we get to see this back in the 70s when you could they could still smoke in the teacher's lounge. We get to learn more, a little bit more about, you know, Mr. Brown, Woody, uh, who's really, you know, kind of a joke, kind of a dorky guy, really disrespected by his kids. And even even Chris Ware, even the Ware character, like, makes fun of him. He's like, I would, if I drew him, it would be funny. It would be comical. Um, and then we get to see in, in Ware's life where he draws his his character, the, the art teacher, does these paintings, obviously like Roy Lichtenstein. He even references Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein in them, but he's like, but I recontextualize it slightly. And, you know, Lichtenstein used a mechanical process to put down his dots in his picture, and I do each of mine painstakingly by hand. Obviously, you know, parodying himself and his meticulous sort of work ethic. He, he, he draws these pages. He draws two pages a week, and he's been drawing this thing for like 16 years. Um, so the, the, that, that's where we get a lot of humor in this book. I think most of the humor comes from the sort of poking fun at himself and he's not really even in the book that much. So what's the rest of the book? A lot of sad stuff, you know, Woody is not super happy with himself. Woody goes and is not happy. He's in a loveless marriage. He goes out and picks up chicks at the holiday inn. Uh, the, the Chalky's sister, Allison, this is her first day at school too. She's not super happy. Um, Chalky himself is finally introduced and he's so painfully shy and introverted. And, you know, even his name, Chalky, uh, this is the, a great moment. So this is the moment where Chalky's first day at school and, uh, and they he's introduced as Chalky White, and and uh, Rusty is like Chalky. He's even dorkier than I am, and this is where this is the beginning of the Chalky White Rusty Brown dynamic, right? These guys end up, of course, like getting together and being best friends because nobody else is into action figures, right? Like they are so tuned into what each other are all about. Um, they're going to become great friends, but like Chalky is the sweetest, nicest possible person and Rusty is not necessarily, right? Rusty sees it as like, oh wow, I was the biggest dork. Now I've got one, someone that I can kind of shit on, which he'll continue to do throughout his life. Not too much in this book because like I said, there's not that much Rusty Brown and Chalky White stuff in here. It all comes later. Um, 
And so who knows how long we're going to have to wait to see that. But that's some of my favorite stuff, like the adult chalky white and rusty brown. I'll get into that a little bit. Um, that stuff is hilarious. Really funny parody of the sort of collector's scene and how they're sort of like dog eat dog. And Rusty is constantly pulling scams on Chalky to like get his action figure accessories and stuff. It is really funny, fun stuff. So the artwork, the coloring in particular, it's just so beautiful to look at. And it's so like of a time and a place, right? It's very 70s looking, the both the color scheme and 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 the design say of the logos and the rusty brown stuff and um the stories are so like heartbreaking so sad you really do feel sad for for rusty especially in the beginning here um because he's just a poor miserable kid man and and little chalky is probably his saving grace in his life to be honest because you know chalky finally comes around they get together and, and and rusty's forced to leave his desk and he accidentally leaves a supergirl action figure and chalky's sitting there and anybody else in the class that he rusty was so afraid they would see the supergirl action figure and make fun of him and you know it's so it's a sweet like meeting moment in the making it's really a a, a cute thing and then you know we'll get into the sadness uh soon enough so we get into all the lives of all the characters, beautiful moments, fun, fun, interesting dialogue, weird sets of designs, just constant formal experimentation in the form and, 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 and in the storytelling. And then, you know, it's just the main characters. And then we take a real right turn. Or is it a left turn? But we get into this um science fiction story right and and, and out of nowhere we're hearing the story of a, a, a group of astronauts choosing to, chosen uh to go populate mars and and then it slowly turns from that into almost like a horror story of one of the, the colonists the, the, these this group of four colonists on mars uh, they don't. They were led to believe that more colonists were coming, and soon maybe they're not. And three of them begin to reject one, and the one who is the narrator, sort of unreliable narrator, is up to some creepy, creepy stuff. And it, it's really chilling and like thrilling in some parts, and then horrific. It's uh, this is a great story. Like if you just read this story unto itself. You'd be like, wow, that was really kind of twisted. But it's then as you, I, I, and I'm not going to spoil it because, man, it's so good. But what we what we discover um, by the end is that, you know, this was a story written by Woody, the, the English teacher, Rusty's father. And sort of like as a young man, he wrote, he was way into science fiction you know, deeply, you can see where Rusty's geekiness obviously came comes from his dad, and and uh, that he sort of like failed in his objectives. He wrote some stories. He had a couple stories published, but you know, ended up getting married. Now he's in this loveless marriage with this kid that he may or may not even like, and you know, he never got what he wanted. So there's a lot of sadness explored there, um, and and we get back into into his life and what happened and how he became you know how he got to where he's at this stuff was uh it seems like you know you look at it and you go like man is this fun or to read it every single page is engrossing and interesting the dialogue the thoughts especially in that sci-fi story man the turns and the way the 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 way the author's subjective narration is like twisted is really chilling in some parts like a great horror story and this stuff where we're talking about you know human uh, interactions and romance like Woody is kind of strung along by some woman in his life and ends up marrying like a second choice and hence his sad life uh, is uh, it's engaging I don't know what to say um, next we segue into another story the story of, of, of Jordan Lint the bully right and this was originally so much of this stuff was originally in the single issues, right? In the floppies, if you will, of Acme Novelty Library. But but like, for instance, here is the floppy of the Lint uh, 
issue of Acme Novelty. It's a hardcover book, right, unto itself. And all of this, this is just like collected inside of Rusty Brown. So if you have all the Acme Novelty stuff, you probably have most of the Rusty Brown stuff, just not collected. And this begins literally with like the birth of the character. And you get to see him sort of like his formation of his mind and identity explored in this sort of symbolic comics form, which is really fascinating. And you can see, you know, his first thing that he can see is like eyes and a face and then his mother and then concentrates on the mama and the breast. And it brings us all the way through that, through his sort of rich childhood upbringing, spoiled brat, private school dude, all the way into like, you know, teenager with a guitar beautiful stuff to look at funny and fun to read there's a lot of humor in this stuff too uh but also just a lot of like looking at this like privileged life of this douchebag and you know we literally get to him all the way through college and all the way through this guy's entire life into having kids and changing his life around and becoming a christian and going singing at church but then like midlife crisis and giving up on that and meeting a new woman and leaving his wife and the whole, all the way, and we are talking all the way into late adulthood and, um, and, 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 and dimension seniors. We go through his entire life all the way, uh, into death. So you get the entire, um, birth, life, and death of this character that sort of intersects with Rusty Brown's and uh, uh, Chalky's sister's life, kind of like tangentially, they're involved here. And, and like, it's just an exploration of his life and why he was a failure. It's a really sad life. He ends up, you know, alienating his his kids and his, his original family and his new family and uh, potentially abused one of his kids. And uh, it's, it's uh, he doesn't have a great ending. Um, again, we get next. We get to explore the uh, the final character, that Joanna Cole, the teacher, and she was sort of grew up in like civil rights era, right? Where lived through the civil rights era. Now in the seventies, just past that, is a teacher at a sort of mostly or all white private school. She's a religious person herself, and she's fine with that. Her sister teaches at the public school. Uh, she helped her sister to like get jobs and excel and stuff. And she herself, it's, uh, Joanna takes care of her mother and plays the banjo and teaches third grade. And that is it, right? She doesn't have a life outside of that. And she's got friends at school that are teachers or students or whatever. And she plays a little banjo and that's it. We get to go back and see her early life and her upbringing with her sisters. And we never quite really it's hard to say why she's so like withdrawn and, and we don't quite understand why she, there's there's characters that reach out to her that she doesn't really respond to the janitor who and we'll see we get to go th all through her life as well and that janitor character who could have been her chance at like romantic happiness maybe is, is dead but and 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 we get to see some pretty ugly stuff with woody brown who is a racist as well as like many of the teachers at the school are racist and, and, and many of the students, like when she brings cookies to school, one of the students tells her that, you know, her father said not to eat anything that she touched. And it's really heartbreaking to her. And, but like, it's just another indignity she's had to suffer. One of the only people that's nice in her life is the music um, store owner who sees that she's really dedicated to the banjo and helps her out by you know giving her an installment plan on a banjo and giving her a job as a banjo teacher and like he's a really great guy um and uh but it's not long after here and towards the end of the book that we get into the secrets and we get to learn why she's so sad stuff that happened early, really early in her life um that i don't want to spoil because it's, it's worth reading and finding out um and she gets to be reunited with you know sort of like long lost character and relatives and 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 i'm reading the book and it's a really sad moment and that's when we get here intermission that's the end of the book and i was like oh man i was expecting a lot more so i i want to really quickly 
uh, switch over uh, here to this website. This is a really great uh, website. I found this guy, Connor Ratliff. Check him out at Connor Ratliff on Twitter. He reviewed this and, and he talked a lot about Acme Novelty and I thought I would just use some of these graphics to, to, to show some stuff. Like here is the sort of um, chalky white uh, um, rusty brown stuff that I was talking about. This is hilarious stuff where uh, chalky or rusty comes up with a scam to make a GI Jim action collector journal and like pre-sell 100 copies to Chalky who doesn't have any money, but he's like, oh, I'll trade you for your G.I. Jim mobile action sled or whatever. You know, just like pulling scams. And he's and it's written in such a funny way where he's like, ah, you too can pull these types of scams on your friends and become a collector. Hilarious, hilarious stuff. Um, this is what exposed me to Rusty Brown. This is the side of Chris Ware that most people don't recognize or have maybe haven't read. Um it is really, really funny, funny, funny stuff. And and it's sad to me in a way that the most people's introduction to Rusty Brown is gonna be um is probably gonna be this book, right? When in reality, you know, to to get it see, this is what we'll see in later books that we don't get to see in this book. These full page Rusty Brown strips that are still sad and, and kind of creepy and weird, but just beautiful to look at and really, really funny. Okay, funny, but then they devolve and descend into creepiness over time. But man, it's fun. Now here's how big of a fanboy I am. There was a there was a Rusty Brown lunchbox back in the early 2000s, and I, and I had one. It came with a little mini comic, and there's comics throughout the lunchbox. It was amazing. I sold it in my comic book store. It's one of the few things I, I wish I still had. I don't have any of my Chris Ware stuff uh, anymore. You know, I used to have it all. I had every issue of Acme Novelty Library and all the Rusty Brown stuff and the standee and the stand-up and all that stuff. I don't got any of it anymore. Uh, the only thing I've... All my collection, most of my collection got stolen from me years ago. Anyway, I've got the Lint graphic novel. But I do have... I did look on my shelves and I do have... I found this at a remainder at a bookstore. You can get this for like 10 or 15 bucks or something. It is gigantic. It's full of great comics. You, you can only see through them... Here in the back cave, we've got special lighting. Um, but full size comics, you'll get them, those Rusty Brown comics. So if you like the Rusty Brown book, if you read it and you want more Rusty Brown right away, go look for this Acme Novelty Library by Pantheon. Uh, you, you might, like I said, find it even in remainder bins at bookstores, but uh, you'll be able to get your Rusty Brown and your Chalky White fix. Speaking of getting a fix, this has been a long video talking about something I love. I, you probably didn't make it this far in the video. I, I probably won't get a lot of views on this, certainly not compared to X-Men, but I'm not complaining. I love all kinds of comics. I'm gonna continue reviewing and talking about the stuff I love. Thank you for watching and supporting this show. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, etc. Hit that bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.